Talking about more bad news for the UK. Talking about more bad news for the UK. Look at this. Outdoor smoking ban at pubs being considered. Can you imagine? Whenever I say sometimes that the UK is home of anti-fun or is the capital or the home of anti-fun, people laugh at me. Oh, you're being dramatic. You're being dramatic. Stop over-exaggerating. Look at what you see here. They're going to ban smoking in an outdoor smoking area. So where are you meant to smoke now? This is coming from a non-smoker. Where are you meant to smoke now? If you can't smoke in an outdoors smoking area, <laughs> where are you meant to smoke? <laughs> like the government's trying to tell you what you should and shouldn't do with your body. Cool. Fez, let's continue and read the article. It says here, Sir Keir Sharma has confirmed the government is looking at tougher rules on outdoor smoking to reduce the number of preventable deaths linked to tobacco use. Responding to reports that smoking could be banned in some outdoor spaces in England, the Prime Minister said, we have got to take action to reduce the burden on NHS. The details remain unclear, but smoking could be banned in pubs, gardens, outdoor restaurants, and outside hospitals and sports grounds. Health experts have welcomed the plans, but BBC has been told that some businesses are very concerned about the impact the ban could have on the hospitality sector. Some business owners have already raised concerns. Pub landlady Lisa Burrage, 55, said pubs should choose whether or not to smoke free, and it's not up to the government to decide that. Exactly. The other thing as well, I think, the other thing as well, I think, in this regard is, surely, if this is the case, like, let's believe for a second, let's extend a leaf or a, a you know a branch of good grace or benefit of doubt to the government and say maybe they've seen the statistics and the data and maybe it is true that a lot of the reasons why there's such a big backlog and huge queues for nhs services nowadays and hospitals and gps all over the fucking country is because a lot of people are being admitted to for like smoking related illnesses or diseases and those things are quite preventable, right? It's one thing having a chronic illness and shit, but having, you know, suffering for something related to nicotine, which you can ease, which you can stop and quit if, if need be, is probably putting an untold amount of strain on your chest. So the only way to kind of get that strain away and reduce the cues is to say, you know what, we need to limit the amount of people are smoking. That is understandable. But if that's the case, release the data. I think the numbers and the data, if they released it and said, hey, the majority of the queues that you're seeing in the NHS now in your local hospital is because X, Y, and Z group of people between these type of ages more and more are being fucking admitted to hospital with these related illnesses, you know, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. But they're not releasing any data. There's no, I haven't seen so far hard evidence or data that kind of backs this up. It just seems to be one of those things that just doesn't make any sense in the grand scheme of things. And considering the amount of clubs and bars and pubs across the country that are closing, this is just another reason why nightlife in the hospitality sector is really on its knees in the uk despite being a easy money maker for the government especially in terms of the london being one of the major parts of our you know gdp it seems as if they really do take the piss they really 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 do take the piss when it comes to flipping nightlife like they don't give a fuck about it they really don't give a fuck about it like they could if they wanted to if it was up to them they would probably get rid of all the bars and clubs anyway if they could get away with it, but they probably can't because it does, again, contribute um, to the underlying London GDP. But it's just like, to what end is this really serving? Because I, I'm, I'm of the thinking, if you're smoking now, with the amount of information that's available now, with the amount of cigarette boxes that have those fucking crazy images of like lung disease and all this type of malarkey, with everything that we know, with access to Google, if you're smoking now, you're a smoker. Cool, do you. But no amount of government intervention is ever going to make you stop smoking nothing even if they decide to ban all the public all the open outdoors public smoking areas people are just going to find other ways to smoke they're just going to find other ways whether it's going around the corner standing on the fucking pavement they're just going to find another way because they're smokers this is what they do so i don't think these government interventions are going to have the impact that they think it's going to have if anything it's just going to cause people more annoyance and they're just, they're just going to figure out other ways to do the things that they enjoy personally it continues this will be just be another hurdle we have to face in hospitality and we can do without it. Tony, Tony Harding, sorry. Tony Harding, a publican, um, what's that? A, publish, a publican in Salisbury said residents who live near his pub will probably be not be happy with the punters being smoking and blocking the pathway in the street instead of a nice comfortable garden. Exactly. I didn't even think about that logistically. I didn't even think about that. So now the government wants to take, imagine like a Weatherspoons or any type of regular pub in wherever you live in the UK. They usually will have like a smoking area in the front, like a cornered off little section. 
in most weather spoons, it's usually like a little square in front of it. Like every other pub, there's a smoking area. That's actually quite, even though there's a lot of condensed smoke in that one area, that's actually quite reasonable and comfortable for everybody else because you just keep everybody in one space, in one rectangle, in one square. If the if what the government want to be enacted does get approved, you're going to have people, what, just walking up and down the street smoking, standing on the fucking pavement, taking up loads of space. Then what? Then so now you're gonna be, now you're gonna be requiring security and bouncers and door pickers to be like street pavement ushers. Hey guys, move down the street. Like it's already it's already annoying for bouncers anyway inside of the club because they have to keep people out from in front of the, in front of the street because if you keep if you keep people in front of the street, so if you keep people in front of the club or in front of the bars on the pavements, they just gather around and they make noise. If they make noise, it's going to disturb the neighbors. Neighbors will complain. License gets taken away. Eventually, club has to close. So they have to keep shoo shooing people away. It's a constant, no, go away, go away. Are you coming in or are you going away? Go, continue on. If you want to come in, come in. If you don't, continue on. So now they're going to have to do that with smokers. Fucking hell. Smokers chatting away, having a good time, talking to their to, talking to their potential future husband or wife or collaborator. And you're going to be telling them to kind of shoo shoo. It's, like, it's going to be a nightmare, bro. It's going to be such hard work. It's such a bore for people that work there. Really will be. But the PM stressed that the health impact in this message, tobacco use in the UK's single biggest... Whoa, hold on. Tobacco use in, is the UK's single biggest preventable cause of death, killing two-thirds of long-term users and causing 8,000 deaths every year. Health authorities say there's no safe level of exposure to second and smoke. I'm sorry, but much like COVID, I felt like with COVID, there was a clear sign or feeling that governments around the world were trying to get to the point of preventing all deaths from COVID. That's what it felt like. That's why towards the end, people started to get a little bit fatigued by the lockdowns. Because like, look, this virus is real and it's crazy and it's claiming the lives of a bunch of people that we all know and love, but we have to get back to living. We can't just be cowering away in our homes, fearful that we're going to die from this virus. If it takes you, it takes you. That's, w that's what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. This idea you're going to prevent deaths across the board is diabolical people are people people are fucking idiotic they're gonna put themselves in harm's way for fun if need be and the more you actually prevent them from doing so they're gonna go out of the way to do it anyway they're gonna go out of the way to do it anyway so if anything do it with some level of like controls some level of supervision some levels of you know whatever where you can have oversight just letting people go and do it on their own in their free will is absolutely insane and doesn't actually go to kind of fix the issues. Like I said, when people are annoyed, they're going to find really interesting ways to kind of get around it anyway. So this isn't going to actually work the way they think it's going to work, in my personal opinion. In any new ban would apply only to England. It's not yet clear if it would apply to the rest of the UK, though devolved governments could not also bring similar rules. Well, taking off the back of that, I also wanted to check this out because they're talking about it in Australia and how it's worked. So I wanted to see courtesy of this article courtesy of the of the fucking bbc about how this smoking ban actually works in australia because i'm curious like clearly there's some reason why they're doing this um I, I, conspiracy theory would be that i don't know maybe if you limit the amount of people that are smoking outside of pubs and bars maybe that increases the i don't know the value of the properties maybe that's something to be tied into it Maybe, and there's already been, you know, the stories out here about MPs being landlords and being shitty landlords. Maybe a lot of MPs owns a lot of land in the UK or buildings where pubs are, but a lot of the value of those pubs and buildings has been decreased because of the amount of people that are hanging around smoking and leaving, you know, buildings with smoke damage. I don't know. Maybe there's something to do with that. I don't really know. That's the only conspiracy theory I can have because it doesn't seem to be any other logical reason why you would pre prefer to not have a designated smoking area outside where you can kind of control and see who's there as opposed to just having people just like in the streets smoking wherever. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let this courtesy of this BBC, what the outdoor smoking ban in Australia could tell us about the UK's future. So, um, Jack Berman takes a long drag and then excels. Slowly covered, slowly, slowly, in the covered terrace of a 150-year-old pub in Sydney Beach suburb. Around him are others like him, pub goes enjoying the winter sun and a beer in one hand. On the other side of the pub, patrons are tucking into their lunches. There's no cloud of smoke around their heads, nor anyone angled away from their neighbour. This is how smoking is regulated in pubs in Australia, where bans, um, where bans at many outdoor spaces have been in place for two decades. As the government looks to clamp down on outdoor smoking, could Australia, where smoking has plummeted over 25 years, be a model? And how the pubs have coped. So they're basically trying to say 
Australia has done the same thing for two decades and smoking has come down. So maybe if you like push, if you like prevent people from doing things easily, there's going to come a point where they're going to be like, you know what? I just give up. I'm just going to pay. I get, it's almost like Photoshop, right? Or Serato. There was a point where I kept like having ripped pirated copies of those apps. But then it got to a point where they tried, they made it as hard as possible on Mac to have a lot of cracked software that now a lot of us just pay subscriptions. Okay, cool. I don't want to pay the subscription, but because you're making it so hard for me to have a pirated copy, I'm just going to pay it. So maybe if they exhaust the options, most of us will end up complying. Maybe. Prime Minister Sir Kerr Stamer said the government um, is looking to tighten the outdoor smoking rules to help reduce the number of preventable deaths. In Australia, rules vary from state to state, but broadly speaking, at pub gardens and parks, designated smoking sections are set up to protect non-smokers from secondhand smoke. At beaches and clubs, and smoking is banned altogether. But that's what we already have. So they have designated smoking. That's what we already have that. As Berman has, has been smoking since he was 15 and lived through with Australia's foot reforms, Back then, you could smoke on trains and cinemas everywhere, really. But while pub culture has evolved, it doesn't feel left behind. Evidence the fact that having a pint at midday with an old mate. A short walk away, there's a table of young men who are self-confessed self social smokers. They smoke when they've had a bit too much to drink, but not often, they say. When the urge strikes, James Beltram, a 28, he doesn't mind having another section of the pub. He likes a random social interactions or smoking area. You sort of meet new people. It creates a different atmosphere. So this is what we have already, no? But Kenny26 finds it all a bit grim. I feel like smoking areas are often a way for everything and it's in some random spot, like it's not an experience that you seek out. Now, that's not true. Some of my best social experiences, some of my best conversations that I don't remember now, but some of my best interactions with human beings have been in smoking areas. I don't even smoke. So I think smoking areas are, are usually, especially in England anyway, are such a great way to kind of break the ice, especially how people are a little bit like, you know, closed off and clicky and cold and shit. Smoking areas can be a good way to kind of um, forge or force a new friendship. Having grown up in smoke-free environments, though, everyone sitting around a table agrees on one thing. Having to breathe in second-hand fumes in public would be a bit bleak. Traveling to Europe and seeing people smoke in restaurants outdoors is novelty and for a minute it's cool. But then after a while, you realize you have butts everywhere on the ground. It's pretty gross. Like right now, for example, I'm pretty glad no one is blowing smoke in my face. That's a lie. I kind of don't mind it when I come back from like places like Berlin and I have that bit of smoke in me. Kind of reminds you of my trip. Sort of like you can kind of, you know, I remember her or I miss her type of thing. So I don't really mind it, to be fair. Um, and to be honest, I don't think I see... Just from my own naked eye, I don't think I see more people smoking when I go to places in Europe where they allow people to smoke in bars and shit than I do in the UK. It's the same amount. I personally think. I don't think it's any different. You know? And places like Berlin, like they have they have they have the ability to like drink in pub gardens until like eleven PM. Sometimes twelve. In the UK, pub gardens are like closed at like nine, eight AM, eight PM. Which is brutal. Considering how little sun we get in the UK anyway. The little sun we do get, you should let people be outside for as long as possible, but they only let you stay out until like 8 p.m. at the most because most pubs are like in residential areas and people complain. It's like, fucking hell, bro. If you live next to a pub, you can't really dictate when the pub opens and closes. That That's gentrification is just the lack of fucking like balance and fairness and gentrification is always the thing that's annoyed me. I'm not really that annoyed and pissed off about gentrification in general because it's bound to happen right living in a capitalist world but i feel like the lack of like balance and consideration for either party is really annoying it's always favored it's always weighted on the side of the fucking developers or the residents that's all it's favored on it's never something okay cool we're gonna come to the table and come to like a you know a mutual agreement something that kind of works for both parties we're gonna come to some level of compromise it's always the fucking landlords or the sorry the pub landlords or the club or, you know owners having to compromise fully and be like oh yeah we'll close our pub garden at 7 p.m because there's residential area it's like bro you live around the pub in a club that's that's your decision it's not your fault but you decide to live here let let them be open when they want to be open like come on man it's just oh yeah 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 at least meet in the middle, at least. Like, 8 p.m. to close a pub garden makes no sense to me. Um, it continues. Uh, having grown up with a... Da -da -da -da, everyone is sitting around. The table agrees on one thing. Not everyone feels the same about the news rules. A few blocks away, 33-year-old old security guard, Rob, who would only give his first name, is on a break smoking in a hallway. He still vividly remembers at the time, he puts it, Australia loved to smoke. 
Back in the 80s, teachers were smoking classroom, parents would smoke in public transport. Now they're trying to police everything. No smoking sign hovering me, hovering me inches above his head. Smokers pay top dollar for cigarettes and we're brutally discriminated. Only an Australian, only an Australian would try and become a victim because they're not allowed to smoke everywhere and anywhere. Because they're not allowed to go to like a their, their kid's primary school and blow fucking huge clouds up in the primary ground while they wait for their kids to come out. Come on, man. This smoking discrimination is fucking hilarious. Gotta love Australians, man. They have absolutely no shame. Nine times out of ten, there's no benefit to actually visit a licensed venue uh, because you won't be able to enjoy a drink and a smoke at the same time. While pubs have become beer gardens, many don't have outdoor spaces for smoking sections is regulated in the gambling room. It's affecting licensed venues. They're losing customers. Now they try to keep them inside the VIP gambling lounge, which leads to smokers spending more money um, on gambling machine. Oh my God, look at that. Of course. Of course, there's always a rub. There's always a grift. There's always a hook. There's always a way to make money. Now they try to keep them inside the VIP gambling lounge, which leads to smokers spending more money on gambling machines. And we all know gambling isn't cool. So they don't want you to smoke in most areas. But then when the area they put you to smoke, they want to keep you busy because you're not making them any money while you're smoking. You're drinking your drink slower. You're talking to people. You're just wasting time. You're not at the bar constantly. So they want to get something out of you. So they put fucking slot machines there. There you go. Here's a slot machine. Fucking hell. I've definitely noticed less people out and about smoking in public as a result of these laws. Public health experts, um, that's exactly the goal. Having an impact. Having an impact. Daily smoking across um, Australia has now been down to 8.3 from 16% in 2022. That's not a lot. Is that really, a, is that really worthwhile? Daily smoking rates in Australia are now down to 8.3% from 16% in 2000 and 24% in 991. Experts attribute that a mix of policies including banning adverts for tobacco, healthy warn health warnings and plain packaging on cigarettes and high product taxes. But smoke-free environments have been the key to stamping out the public. Smoking in public, lawmakers took smoking bans outdoors in the 2000s. Health authorities were concerned about the impact of secondhand smoke when a non-smoker breathes in inhale smoke it is a guidance above passive and a second-hand smoking cancer research says the uk's nationwide um sorry the uk national health insurance service says that secondhand smoke is a lethal cocktail of more than four thousand irritants toxins and cancer-free causing substances you know i would say i would actually want a solution where they did the opposite okay we all know smoking is bad i don't even smoke so i'm advocating for this just clear for the smokers i'm like the smoking jesus why don't we have a solution where they designate certain pubs and bars or clubs with the ability to have the regular smoking that we have now, where you can smoke in designated bits of the smoke, in, in you can smoke in designated areas of the beer garden, and you can smoke in designated areas in front of the pub. Why, why doesn't that exist? So then you have the option as a punter to decide, I'm going to go to this smoke-free bar, or I'm going to go to this smoker's bar. So when you go there, you don't complain. If your whole entire body ends up smoking a fucking Marlboro Lights, that's because you went to the smoker's bar. If you don't want to smell that, and you want to smell of like shitty scented um, candles and shit and fucking JD, then you go to that other bar. That's perfectly fine, but they won't do that. All they want to do is stamp it out, force you not to do it. And it's not even like they improved the fucking experience. There was that annoying, really terrible fucking um, picture that I saw recently. Some woman shared it on Twitter, actually, where she paid... Nine, no, seventeen ninety five. This woman allegedly paid seventeen ninety five for a large glass of white wine. You right? You know, you know, white ladies love their white wine. This glass of white wine had two ice cubes in it, which is really kind of you know a little bit lame. But it was also in a plastic cup. This woman was sat in a let's say like a cocktail bar somewhere in Islington, which is a nice part of London. And she paid seventeen ninety five for a large glass of white wine. So you're going to take away my fucking smoking areas. You're going to take away part of the reason why we go out and we socialize. We go hang out and we have a good time. And you're not even going to try and put some of that monies or whatever into the experience of the pub and bar itself. And improve the quality of the drinks or the offerings. Or even just dignify me and treat me like a fucking adult and give me a glass. If I'm asking for a glass of wine, I want a glass. I don't want a plastic cup of wine no but they give you that and they put and for good measure to make sure you don't notice that it's actually not like a large glass it's actually a medium but they added two ice cubes in it to make it look more full 
and they obviously give it to you in a really big large white glass in a in a very big transparent you know plastic cup so it feels like you're drinking way more than you actually are absolute scumbags across the board absolute scumbags across the board it doesn't 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 get any worse than that i swear to god i swear to god